Hey guys, Cage Deer here, and I'm finally, 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 finally doing a video I wanted to do um before last week, but because of time constraints and I just finished the book too late, I couldn't exactly do that. Now, for these past few um book reviews of books that I've won over on Goodreads, my account is in the description box, so go follow me if you have one. I've been reading books that were just... They had stuff to talk about, but then at the same time there was not much to it. Because overall the books were just... Nish. I think the last one that I had, like, a more extensive, um, glimpse upon was Evie Drake Starts Over, but even then it was kind of like, okay, this is your typical, like, adult novel about a woman coming to her senses, blah blah blah. But for today's book, I have one that I indulged myself from beginning to end because I did not expect to like it as much as I did. And I already will say that this book, I do give it a high rating. It's not exactly a 10 out of 10, but I would highly recommend it for especially all the all you young adults out there because finally, it's a young adult novel that has substance. So the book is called How It Feels to Float by Helena Fox. And yes, I won the copy when the book well, the book has not been released yet, or maybe it has, but I have not checked. So I basically got a pre-sale copy, which, of course, with all pre-sale copies, they say this is not the final version, blah, blah, blah. You know, they just usually get these out there just for people to tell reviews of them and to get their opinions. Like me, of course. And I will say, Helena Fox has gotten... I think this is her debut? Yes, she's got like the perfect debut novel on her hands and I hope she does not change too much of this because I love it the way it is. Like, don't do anything major with this book. So this book is about a girl, a 16 year old, 17 year old from Australia named Biz. It's short for Elizabeth and I don't know if Biz is, like, an Australian nickname for Elizabeth, but good god, I could not get used to that because normally I hear, like, Ellie or Liz, Lizzie. Like, I've known a couple of those girls, but of course I live in the United States. That Those are normal. Never have I heard the nickname Biz used. Because when I think of Biz, I think it's short for business. And it's just weird. But... As I said earlier, this book does not take place in America. It actually takes place in Australia, and it and it's in the point of view of an Australian teenager, which I'm like, finally, we have some variety, because America is not the only English-speaking country. Thank you. So the thing about Biz is it's that she's not exactly popular because... She lives at home with her single mo mother and her very young twin siblings because her father died when Biz was a child and basically the mom's boyfriend after her dad was a complete and total dick. <laughs> and um, she's basically kind of one of those teenagers who like tries to stay out of trouble but at the same time she always walks into it. But then she has a secret, which is not a spoiler because this is actually the whole plot of the book itself. Even though her dad is dead, she claims she can see his ghost and that his ghost talks to her. Now, this is also not a spoiler alert at all because this book um, in the genre section of Goodreads blatantly tells you this is a young adult mental health novel. So they blatantly tell you that the main character might have a some sort of mental disorder or mental disability or mental illness or something like that. I think the way this book formats itself into that genre, I think it does a 
pretty darn good job of it. Like, I'm going to show you a few pages from, like, the first hundred pages of the novel. This might not be the best example, but it has these really, like, delicate, intricate, um, indented paragraphs. This is during, um, an interview scene, and you can tell, like, the regular fonted sentences are regular sentences, and then the, um, italics are just basically business thoughts running through her head, and this tells me this is the stuff that she wants to say, however, at the same time, she can't. Because there's a lot of things that Biz wants to say in this book, but we only get to see it through italics, which is basically her thought process. But when she actually speaks, it's basically the complete total opposite. Because you know those type of scenes where it's like the main character wants to pour her heart out or his heart out, like due to a highly tense moment and stuff like that, but when they finally do speak, it's always, yes, I'm fine. It's okay, I guess. Yeah, this is basically one of those, but as I'm reading it, it's like I'm reading poetry. Because it always goes from, like, the flowing, this is how it sh should be, like, this is the truth of all things, to this is what we end up getting. And it's not done in the disappointing kind of way, because... Especially since this is towards the beginning of the book. Like, this is the whole part of character development that people are dying to see as the book goes on. Now I'm gonna talk about something that I didn't talk about in my other book videos. Because I could not connect to many of the main characters of those books at all. Because they're either unrealistic or they're just downright meh. I loved... Biz. I could actually relate to her for once. Though, I don't think they specifically say, um, what type of illness Biz had, but the one thing that came to my mind is if she's seeing, like, these random people that other people can't see, I- she might have, um, traumatic schizophrenia or something like that? I mean, that's the closest I got. Don't quote me on that at all, because I might be completely, totally wrong. I'm not an expert on all these mental illnesses that do exist in the world because I know in today's modern age we have plenty that fall into plenty of di different categories. And this book doesn't really describe all of the symptoms, but they do pinpoint like the more important ones, which become the whole plot of the story. And that's when I say this is a mental health book done right. It takes the concept of this illness that this character might have and it doesn't fully become her personality but it becomes this thing that drives her to make this goal and then follow through it to the end and in the middle and towards the beginning like almost the second act of the book um biz finally decides that she thinks her father is alive or something like that, or maybe not alive, but she wants to know more about him because, like I said, she he died when Biz was was young, like not too young, but like not she was barely in her teens. Like I think she was like six or seven years old. Like she never really got to know her dad, and she wants to know more, so she makes the um, the radical decision to. Travel halfway across the southern part of Australia to where, um, her father grew up to learn what his and his family were like. Because the only thing that she knows about her family is her mom and her mom's side. And I think since his death, her mom did not talk about her dad that much. Which, coming from a grieving widow, well, I'm not a grieving widow, but in the grieving widow's perspective, I can entirely understand that. Funny thing, too, is, um, she doesn't go by herself because there's a new kid at school named Jasper who she kind of has a crush on. And it's only after she gets expelled from school for a, um, incident that should never have happened, but 
because Biz was not in the right state of mind, it did. Um, she ends up fully talking to him because she signs up for this photography class and she meets his grandmother, who also attends the class, and that's how they intermingle and finally connect. He decides to go with her because, according in Jasper's mind, he's like, yeah, I shouldn't be doing this either, but because you're not supposed to be doing it first, I don't want you going alone because something will happen to you, blah, blah, blah. And knowing about um, Biz's sort of mindset by this point in the book, you're like, yeah, Jasper, you go with her because we don't want her to end up like dead on the other side of Australia. You know what I mean? So uh, that's another thing, too. Like, there is a sort of romance in this book, but it's not the main plot point. But how they do develop um, Biz and Jasper's relationship in this novel, I think it was done perfectly natural. And it made a lot of sense considering um, all the fake points that Biz had to go through. It's from, like, l trying to live a somewhat normal life to her very, very low point, which, of course, if you have a... If you have, like, a mental health thing... You are going to get those down points, like, no matter what. I'm not saying it's not only people who have mental illness or disabilities who have those down points. But for Biz, it's like, during the first act, it's like, everything was fine. And then, because of one thing, everything went wrong. In just one night. Like, when you read this book, you'll understand exactly what I mean. I can't spoil too much of that, but considering um, what Biz went through, she is actually pretty surprised that Jasper would even decide to talk to her again after that. Especially since Biz is like, oh, hey, I met your grandmother. She's really nice, and she told me a few things about you, and he's like, Oh, okay. So you're going to be hanging around for quite a while. So, and you're about my age. Actually, they are the same age. They're in the same grade. What am I talking about? Let's talk and get to know each other. And they start texting every single day. And I'm like, these two have to get together or so help me. But again, considering what the main genre of the book is, it's not romance. I wasn't really expecting a lot of things, but I was praying that those two were going to get together. And again, I will not spoil that part because that's in the third act, um, further towards the end. And, um, let me see if I can find something better when it comes to how this book is for further formatted. Because there are some chapters where it just becomes, um, extremely poetic in how it's written. And like I said, considering the character of Biz, it makes the most sense because sometimes she can think straight. Other times, um, it's, um, jagged and not exactly clear cut, which I'm like, yes, this makes complete and total sense to me. And it's not written in a way where it's, where it's like, duh, 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 like very staccato -y in sentences, like it's not unbearable to read. Like, here's, like, here's one. It's, like, towards the end of a chapter where all the sentences, like, are, it's either one or two sentences and a new paragraph starts. Because this is, um, Biz's thinking process. It's, like, one thing, and another thing, and another thing, and another thing. And because, um, a lot of things were happening to Biz in her mind, it makes sense, it makes sense to go from one thing to another, and especially with her memories, where it's like, when I mentioned the photography class, her, I guess, like, her point of view is kind of like how you would, um, describe a, um, photograph, like, for a photography project. I've never taken a photography class, but I've had a feeling it would go, like, very, like, slam poetry, like, artistically spoken, like, if I'm looking at a photo photograph of a woman and her dog at the dog park, it's like, you're not describing this is a woman with her dog at the dog park. You're going to describe, like, what the woman could possibly be thinking and what the dog would possibly be looking at if he's looking at anything at all or if he's 
sleeping and you're trying and depending if there's color or not in the photo it's a black and white photo you're trying to imagine like what type of day is it at the dog park it it's like you're close reading a like a picture of a scene that's supposed to be like ordinary like you see it every day but you're trying to make up like a little story about it that's what I think of when I read this book, which is basically all in business point of view. It's in first person and everything. And some of the scenes or paragraphs are just very short sentences. Like it's all of business train of thought just coming into play here. And as I said, this is a mental health genre slice of life young adult novel. It works. It's not like it comes out of nowhere. Considering her character, considering the setting, it completely totally works. Now of course there are things that I don't like about this book either and I'm not too picky about it because I mean a lot of things are done perfectly and I would not change like anything major or else it would not um, make the story work as I like it right now. I just think that some of the characters were kind of, um, throwaways and some of the, um, questions that I have were not exactly answered. Like, Biz has a best friend named Grace and of course after an incident happens one night involving Biz and Grace, Grace has to move to another town because um they got arrested and Grace's mother is like basically ashamed of what her daughter did so they have to move away and stuff and um of course when Biz is trying to communicate with Grace Grace does not respond like at all and like I said the thing it does play into the third act but again I cannot spoil that because, like I said, the third act answers a lot of those questions, but it, it kind of really doesn't answer the Grace thing that well. But then again, I wouldn't really change anything about that because that's also the part of the mystery of this book, to which I don't know how to explain that well. I also don't like that um, Biz's mom is kind of a pushover. I mean, look, she's a single mother raising three kids. Like, her first husband died. Her boyfriend basically left her to raise, like, two young babies and a, um, ten-year-old at the time, like, by herself. So, I understand that she has greater hardships than we all can think. But when it comes to Biz's, like, antics... Like, even after the incident where Biz was basically arrested, she's like, yeah, you can, since you're, like, suspended for, like, a couple weeks, or, like, two weeks or something, you can do whatever you want still. Um, that's not what a normal mother would say. Your mother would basically be ordering you to do chores around the house for two weeks and watch you like a hawk. Like, she would not say, oh, you can go to this photography class, you can do go to this, like, digital art class. Like, I think the only time that she ever put her foot down was when Biz said that she wanted to go across co the country to see where her father grew up. Because she's like, no, that's too far away. You cannot go by yourself. Are you insane? And Biz is like, oh, what if I bring Jasper with me? And she's like, no, still not doing it. I mean, Biz still goes, obviously. And instead of calling the cops, saying, hey, my daughter ran, ran away to the other side of the country. Um, Biz's mother is like, at this point, I can't stop you. To which I'm questioning, how much power does she really have over this girl who has obviously some mental issue that we're trying to dissect here? Like, if I, like, if I were to rewrite this mother character, or rewrite this mother character for myself, I would either A, kind of make her overprotective because considering um, Biz's past and flashbacks that she puts into this book, 
I would be like, okay, something is clearly like not normal with my daughter, so I'm just gonna try to protect her from the elements. Or B, I would just get rid of the mother character all together and I don't know, have Biz live with a with a relative who basically can't control her. Who's not her mother, like maybe an aunt or a grandmother or something, a cousin or something. Because that would make more sense to me than a mother who's just like, okay, I've given up on my crazy teenage daughter. Like, I'm not using crazy as an offense word or anything like that. That was just the first thing that came to my mind. But then again, like I said, like, I think if anything major changed with this book, then the whole story would have to change itself. And I like the story the way it is, because that was the only thing, other than Biz's, like, character development, that kept me going. Like, I wanted to know more about Biz's father, because if she can see, like, his ghost, and if he can talk to her, like, there has to be something interesting about the guy. And like I said, that's all in the third act. He gets really, really interesting in the third act. Yeah, like, if I tried to dissect this um, book any further, I'd basically be beating the dead horse. I would rate this book, like I said, I'm not going to give it a 10 out of 10 because there are some flaws with it, but they did not bother me as much. So I would say a 9 out of 10, but I'd still highly, highly, highly recommend that you read this if you can find it. Like, if it's out already, like, find it at your bookstore. Like, if you have a Kindle or a Nook, please buy it there. If there's an audiobook of this, please listen to that. Because, like I said, I think this is what, one of those debut novels that will skyrocket Helena Fox's career. Like, to a whole nother level. Like, I've seen debut novels of artists that were just... Okay, but then when they come out with their second or third book, that's the one that skyrockets them to fame. But I think Helena Fox is going to be one of those like authors I'm going to keep track of. Because I want to read more stories like this. Like, I love her writing style. I love how she develops her characters. I just love that. And she's even... Like, let me see. Let me um, read this to see if this is correct. Yes, she's an Australian author. I want to, um, I, I'm so, I'm sorry, I'm running a little breathless because I really, really love this book. I just want to see a lot more creative material from people who are not from the country where a lot, where I live. Like, there are other authors all around the world that have their own creative take on you know, what it is to grow up in that, in a country that's different from yours. Like, whether they speak your language or whether, um, they're the same color of skin as you are. Like, I've read, I think one of my, like, my favorite novels have to be, like, from authors who are not exactly white Americans. Like, because their cultures are so interesting to me. They're different from my own, like, they take another glimpse at another life. And I like looking at books that look at other lives. Like, I kind of don't like reading books that are um about, like, you know, the classic suburban, like, normal teenager who doing, doing normal things. Because that is boring. I can tell you, this is far from boring. There are other books that I can't come up with the titles off the top of my head right now. They are not boring either. They actually take you on a, an emotional journey. Like, it's not even like an adventure. It's a journey. Like, not the, like, Lord of the Rings type journey, but it's almost that type of level nonetheless. Like I said, if you can find this book, audiobook, anywhere, either after this after I post this video, or basically whenever, please pick this up. I'm practically begging you at this point. Like, 
if I did not like this book at all, I probably would not be talking as much about it. I probably would have made this video like five minutes just ranting about what I hated about it. So with that said, if you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe for some more. Don't forget to hit the like button um, somewhere below the bar or below the video screen, you know, you know what to do. And uh, if you have also read this book or when you do get to reading it, please comment down in the comments what you thought of it and, you know, the whole shebang. So with that said, I'm Kate Sharon. It's been real. Ciao.